Well, hi, everybody. I'm Don Stewart, and welcome to another edition of Breaking News. Today is Monday, the 20th day of May, 2024, and it's getting real interesting now in the Middle East and real interesting with respect to last day's Bible prophecy because of the shakeup that's going on right now in Iran with the confirmed death of the leader, Raisi. All right, so that's our top headline. Iranian president, foreign minister, confirmed killed in the helicopter crash. We thought that would be the case, and so today it was confirmed in Iran. It remains unclear what caused the crash. Iranian state media reported on Monday that President Ibrahim Raisi, the country's foreign minister, and several other officials died in a helicopter crash in the northwest of the country. Iran's Supreme Leader has also confirmed the deaths. Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, who holds ultimate power in Iran, said on social media platform X that he had received the bitter news of the martyrdom, they call it the martyrdom, of Mr. Raisi and his entourage. The bitter tragedy took place while he was serving the people, he said. And so it has been confirmed, the president of Iran, Raisi, the butcher of Baghdad, probably one of the top three most evil people in the world, is now dead. Now, there's some implications of this. Let's go on. Two big problems now is our next point facing Iran. Who will replace Raisi, and who will be the heir apparent for the supreme leader? Now, this is going to be an ongoing story now that the death of the butcher of Baghdad is confirmed. Okay, here's the implications. Nobody is nearly as powerful as Raisi to take over the presidency of Iran or eventually be the supreme leader. As we mentioned yesterday in our second breaking news uh, um, video, Raisi was the man that was going to you know, be the new supreme leader. He's a cleric. He, was, he had all the credentials that were there. He's a very powerful leader. Now that he's gone, there's really no one to step up to do this. There are people who will vow, buy for power. You know, there's going to be a power struggle there, but you don't have anybody of his stature anyway. It's kind of like in 2020 when Soleimani was killed by the U.S. There, he you know he was the one who put together all the uh, all the all the things for Iran to be able to run in the Middle East. Their uh, their strategies. He was he was he was really a brilliant guy, evil brilliant guy, but he was the one who had so much authority there when he died he was taken out there was no one to replace him well you got the same thing going on here right now so um with no real leadership in iran and here's the key for us there does not seem to be any potential for an immediate attack on israel while we were heading for a potential regional war it seems as the brakes have to be put on it now because there you need the leadership to guide that and ricey was the man who was the guy the leader and um Again, the vacuum is there, so it's going to be filled. Now, what we do know, in the long term, it's going to be Russia who will eventually lead the charge against Israel in the Middle East. However, as we emphasized the other day, let's be clear, they are in no position at the present uh, to do something like this, being bogged down in Ukraine. In fact, the fact that they put this new defense minister into position, showing that they're seeming like it's going to be like their Vietnam, Ukraine, they're in, for a long term. It's going to be interesting to see what happens here. So we'll keep an eye on it. Now, for a biblical perspective of what we're, we will eventually see uh, with respect to this invasion of Israel in the last days, please see our book, 25 Signs We're Near the End, specifically Signs 9 through 11. And this book is a free download from our website, Educating Our World, under the heading of Bible Prophecy. All our material is free. And we go into great detail in these three signs, sign nine, in the last days, certain specified nations will invade Israel, Ezekiel 38, 39, sign 10, the nations missing from the Ezekiel 38, 39 invasion, and sign 11, no superpower will intervene on Israel's behalf when they are invaded, something will happen to the United States. Also, we have an entire book on the Ezekiel 38, 39 invasion, where we go verse by verse from the Hebrew in these uh, chapters. And so, again, for, it's called the Ezekiel 38, 39 invasion. Not a real creative title, I know, but it's still there. All right. So all our free downloads from our website, Educating Our World. You're welcome to download them, tell others about them, please, because this gives the biblical perspective of what will take place. And now um, all bets are off. It's really interesting to see what happens. It shows how things can change in an instant, because what we had before, as we've talked about, 
It seemed like, and Iran was preparing for some type of attack, you know, with all its surrogates there, with the Houthis in Yemen, with Hezbollah in uh, northern, uh, southern Lebanon, north, northern part of Israel, an attack there. You've got other, you know, surrogates that are there in Iraq and in Syria. But now there's really no one to guide them and to lead them uh, that has any stature. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. Now, headline number three further emphasizes this. Iran loses key power player after the foreign minister was killed in that same crash. Vocal Israeli critic Hossein Amir Abu Halayan, boasting robust ties with its regional adversaries, lobbied extensively against the Jewish state since the war started, accusing it of, that is Israel, of war crimes and issuing threats. Israel, uh, Iran confirmed on Monday that he also uh, died along with Raisi in the fatal helicopter crash on the Iran-Azerbaijanian border. He was a prominent critic of Israel since the beginning of the Gaza war, lobbying extensively against Israel in recent months, consistently threatening, condemning it, recently embarked on regional tours of stops in Iraq, Lebanon, Syria, and Qatar. Okay, this is a further reason why any major assault against Israel will be delayed. He was a very powerful player, but he is now taken out. So again, he would have been possibly a candidate to take over for Ricey. He had stature, but now it seems to be a real vacuum there. So this is going to be an ongoing story. We'll keep you posted here, but it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Now, headline number four, this is that was sure as the sun rises in the east. Anti-Israel activists blame Israel for Ricey's helicopter crash. A Hamas affiliated, affiliated telegram account took seriously an Israeli joke about a Mossad agent named Eli Copter being responsible for the crash, repeating the claim before deleting the post. Anti-Israeli activists and commentators took to social media to blame Israel for the helicopter. We knew that was coming for the helicopter crash that killed Ricey on Sunday. Uh, some communist uh, political activist named Jackson Hinkle posted a poll questioning whether it was bad weather or Israel that caused the crash with the majority of his kooky followers voting for Israel. What do you expect? Uh, he posted a graphic of the helicopter text, Mossad, it's never an accident. It went on and on. Uh, who do you believe did this? Was it the weather? But like we said, conspiracy theories will abound. But as we mentioned yesterday, when I talked to my friend who works with the special forces, he said he was tremendously surprised that uh, they would put Ricey in this old Russian junkie helicopter that's, uh, you know, not known for being very safe. It's not, it doesn't have modern avionics. In fact, there was an interesting, uh, in one of the periodicals I was reading in the, when the people make comments, sort of the same thing that we said yesterday, but even in more detail where someone wrote, and he talked about this particular helicopter, and it didn't have the modern avionics that uh, new helicopters would be able to deal with the, the weather there, to be able to deal with the mountainside. Now, why they put him on that is beyond explanation. You know, here's the president of the country, but the best they could do is put him on some old junky helicopter that couldn't navigate itself through a storm and through the, this mountain pass there. So it's really fascinating. So, uh, Whatever the case may be, he's gone now, and so is his foreign minister. So we will see. It's never a dull moment here, is there, with respect to what's going on. And like we said, things can change in an instant, and we will see what takes place next. Now, headline number five, we're going to shift gears a little bit. The White House responds to Stefanik's Israeli speech, no better friend in Israel than Joe Biden is what they said. Now, if you don't know the story, the White House issued a statement responding to Representative Elif Stefanik, now, she is for Republic of New York. She spoke to the Knesset, which she criticized Joe Biden for stopping a shipment of weapons to Israel. And so she told the truth and criticized what most Americans think. He should never have done that. So immediately, the White House spokesperson has to issue a statement in response saying, Biden was the first American president to go to Israel during wartime. There's, and he added, there's no better friend in Israel than Biden has been, which is obviously complete nonsense. And all the Israelis know that. He was, you know, and so on and on and on. Her speech comes weeks after the Biden administration halted this shipment of ammunition to Israel. And after Biden started, stated during an interview with CNN, he would withhold artillery and other weapons to Israel if they move forward with an invasion of Rafah, the last stronghold the U.S. designated Islamic terror group Hamas. So interesting. So again, the U.S. going down in the side of the world. Like we've said, uh, Joe Biden, the mistake he has made, different than other past presidents who have taken on Israel. Not only he betrayed them, 
but also he showed weakness. And that is something that you just can't do in that part of the world. If you show weakness, your country does, then you're, uh, it's open season on you. Now, this last story is, uh, it shows how ridiculous our world is. The ICC, the International Criminal Court Chief Prosecutor, is now seeking the arrest of, for Benjamin Netanyahu, Galat, and Hamas chiefs. An Israel, a Israeli official said the decision of the ICC prosecutor in The Hague to request the issuance of arrest warrants against Prime Minister Netanyahu and Defense Minister Yoav Gallant is hypocrisy and disgrace on an international scale. They actually have issuing, they're going to issue a arrest warrant for Netanyahu and Gallant, but they've also applied for arrest warrants for three of the Hamas leaders too, Sinwar, Mohammed Deef, and uh, the character there, that's in, uh, what's his name? Uh, yes, the uh, uh, the guy in uh, uh, Doha. Anyway, the the third guy, the the pretrial uh, uh, sim. No, it's not Sinwar. Anyway, Hania. Thank you, Hania. Anyway, so bottom line is, you. I mean, this is so ridiculous. Arrest warrants for Israel's two top leaders for what they're doing in Gaza and responding to you know the attacks from October seventh, and then that they throw in. Well, we'll have the arrest warrants for. Uh, these three uh, Hamas terrorists, Sinwar, Deef, and uh, the, the character there, uh, Hania, uh, who's, you know, the public face of it now there, who's living in pastoral splendor in these five-star hotels and in uh, different, in Qatar and other parts of the world. Anyway, uh, what a crazy world, isn't it, that this this takes place, that you, you put a, uh, a so-called court, it's kangaroo court, issues a warrant for the arrest of two of these Israeli leaders for responding to a, an attack that killed about 1,400 of their people in one day, that they continue to, uh, you know, torture, uh, bomb, uh, attempt to destroy Israel, and Israel's just responding by going into Gaza and attempting to get rid of them, and yet that is uh, what's called a, a need for a warrant for their arrest. It's you can't, you can't make this stuff up. All right, so here's where we're at today. Big news, of course, is the deaths of Ricey and as well as Iran's foreign minister. There is no natural successor to the president who was groomed to be the new supreme leader. And this is where there's a huge power vacuum. Iran is going to need some time to sort out who's in charge before they could even think about putting together a strike against Israel from all their surrogates. We'll see what happens here because it'll be a time of jockeying and confusion. The nuclear option, though, still must be dealt with by Israel because they're getting closer to that. And so the power vacuum, as we know from scripture, will eventually cause Russia to pick up the slack in the Middle East. But as we said, they are not in a position to do that now. So as always, stay tuned. All right, I'm Don Stewart. Thanks for watching. We'll be we've, uh, later with you today. We've got a bunch of more very important stories that we just didn't have time today to give to you this morning about the attack on Christianity that we're seeing here from the U.S. and um, and uh, in the world, how you've got to take a position now, supposedly, if you're a, uh, some type of celebrity against Israel, against Christianity, and be a pro-Palestinian. So we'll talk about that on our next program later today. Until then, as always, may the Lord richly, richly bless.